Hello cabin crew. Well today we're going to talk about two men who were in prison and how God rescued one of them in a really surprising way. we continue through the book of Acts, we come across King Herod. Now this isn't the King Herod that was around at the time when Jesus was born, but it was one of his relatives and he was king of, of uh, Israel. And um, he wasn't a good king either. This king <laughs> was also a really horrible king as we'll see. In fact, he took James who was the brother of John, remember James and John, one of the apostles who followed Jesus. And he took James and he put him in prison and actually he killed him. Oh, but then when King Herod saw that this pleased the religious leaders, he went and had Peter, another apostle, arrested too. I wonder if he's going to kill Peter. Well, I think he wants to. Shall we find out what happens? So Herod had had Peter arrested and thrown into a jail. Now, what do you think that jail was like? I think it was smelly, dark, horrid. And how do you think Peter was feeling? Do you think he was feeling scared? Worried, possibly. He knows that James has been put to death. Do you think he's frightened? Or what's going to happen? Or do you think he's trusting God? Well, wow, it's interesting. But do you know what Peter does when he's in that prison? He's in that prison with the guards. Peter actually then goes to sleep. Now he goes to sleep because he's trusting God and his heart's at peace, actually. And do you know what? He's chained up and he's got chained next to a guard. Two guards, in fact. They're also chained to him. And there's other guards at the door and outside. You see another guard there? So actually, he's pretty well surrounded, and I'm not sure he's going to get out. What do you think? After Jesus had been taken up into heaven, mean King Herod began doing terrible things to the followers of Jesus. He even had some of them killed. Some Jewish people were happy that Herod was doing this because they didn't believe in Jesus or like his followers. So to please the people, Herod decided to throw Peter in jail too. The king ordered 16 soldiers to guard him over the Passover holiday. But while Peter sat in jail, God's people gathered in their homes to pray for him. That night, an angel came into the jail cell and woke Peter up. Hurry, get up. Peter's chains fell off, but the soldiers kept sleeping. Follow me. but he followed the angel right past all the guards. When they came to the iron gate of the prison, it swung open on its own. But after they had walked a few steps into the city, the angel disappeared. So Peter went to the house of some friends who lived nearby and knocked on the door. 
A servant girl went to the door and asked who was there. Who is it? It's Peter. The Lord sent his angel to rescue me from Herod. The girl recognized Peter's voice and quickly ran to tell the group. Peter is at the door. Hello? But the friends didn't believe the girl and went back to praying for Peter. They didn't realize that their prayers had already been answered. They finally listened to the girl and went to open the door. And that's how God saved Peter from the mean King Herod. And an angel came to me. He freed me from my chains and he let me out the door. Now, King Herod had decided he was going to put Peter to death. And the night before, you'd think Peter would have been worried, wouldn't you, pacing up and down? But no. He has peace in his heart and he goes to sleep. But elsewhere in the city, his friends, the Christians, are praying for him, praying that he would have peace, but praying too that God would rescue Peter. Now, God hears their prayers and he answers them and he sends an angel. And the angel gets into the prison, doesn't have to worry about all the locked doors, but he's there. And he has to actually wake Peter up. He shakes him a little bit, says, wake up, Peter. And all the chains fall off his arms and legs. Now, the angel could have just floated people, Peter out of there. But he doesn't do it that way. What does he do? He says to Peter, get up, get dressed, get your sandals on, get your coat on. And when he's ready to go... Now follow me. Okay, well, so here we are. Peter's now up and dressed. Follow me, says the angel. So, can Peter get out of there? Well, no, everything's still locked up. But the angel unlocks the door, keeps the guards asleep, takes Peter out. Peter has to use his legs then to follow him. He has to walk and follow the angel. And he goes past one set of guards, past another set of guards, past all these guards. And then the angel gets to the outer courtyard and out through there as well until they get into the streets. And all this time, Peter thinks he's in a dream and he's just following the angel. And finally, they get into the streets and then the angel disappears and Peter sort of looks around and starts to think oh how did I get here oh I don't think it is a dream after all oh it looks like God has brought me out thank you and he's starting to look around and think oh what do I do now I'm out of prison this is amazing Now, did you see when the angel got Peter out of prison, there were things that the angel did and then there were things that Peter did. So the angel shook Peter awake and the angel made sure that the chains fell off of Peter because Peter couldn't do that bit, could he? And then the angel said to Peter, get yourself dressed, get the sandals on your feet, get your coat on. The angel didn't need to do that for Peter because Peter could do that himself. Stand up, follow me. That's all stuff Peter could do. Now then the angel opened up the prison gate for the, the cell and he left the guard sleeping. Well, that was something the angel could do. Peter couldn't do that bit, could he? And the angel led Peter through all the rest of the guards, past them all. Now, Peter had to walk to follow the angel, so it was Peter walking. Angel wasn't carrying him. So Peter had to use his legs and follow and do what he was told. 
And the angel took him past all the guards and out the outer gate and into the street. And Peter had to follow him all that way. And that's when the angel went. Now it's interesting, isn't it? The angel didn't ask Peter to do the things that Peter couldn't do. But at the same time, the angel didn't do for Peter the things that he knew very well Peter could do for himself. And often you find when we pray, there's God's part and our part. When we pray, often there's things that we can't do. So we have to ask God to help and we have to ask God to step in. But sometimes God says to us, you need to do your part. If you want this prayer answered, I want you to do your part towards that. I want you to get up, put your shoes on, go out and serve and help people. So whatever it is, if you see you want change in something, perhaps you've got to do your part and then you ask God to do his part. Slapstick Theater. Peter escapes from prison. This is Peter, hey who was one of Jesus' disciples. Yep. Peter told people about Jesus. There was a king named Herod who tried to stop anyone who tried to tell others about Jesus. He arrested Peter and took him to jail to be executed. While Peter was in prison, the people of the church prayed for him. The night before Peter was supposed to go to trial, he was sleeping. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood before him. The angel woke Peter up and said, Quick, get up. The chains fell off Peter's wrists. Wow! Then the angel told him to get up and get ready to go and to follow him. So Peter left the cell, but all the time he thought was happening wasn't real and that it was just a vision. They passed by the guards, and when they came to the iron gate, it opened for them on its own. Wow! Awesome! They were walking through the street when the angel suddenly left him. Wait, what was happening? Peter finally realized that this was all really happening and that God had sent an angel to save him from what King Herod and the Jewish leaders had planned to do to him. Wow! He went to the home of Mary, where many believers were together praying. When Peter knocked at the door, a servant girl came to answer. Hey, uh, let me in! Peter! When she realized it was Peter, she was so excited that she ran inside to tell people instead of letting Peter in. Uh, I'm sure I her. It's Peter! The people inside thought the girl was wrong and said, it must be Peter's angel. But Peter kept knocking. When the people finally opened the door, they were amazed. Peter told them about what happened and all about how God sent an angel to rescue him from prison. Well, the angels got Peter out of prison, but Peter's followed the, the angel and done everything, but he still thought a little bit that he was dreaming until they get out into the street and then suddenly the angel goes. And Peter sort of comes to his senses a little bit and thinks, oh, well, perhaps I'm not dreaming. Perhaps I really am here in the street. So he goes to Mary's house where he knows some of the other disciples, followers of Jesus, are gathered. And he knocks on the door. Knock, 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 knock. Now, a young servant girl called Rhoda comes to the door. Here we go. Rhoda. And she sees that it's Peter. And do you know what she does? She doesn't let him in at all. She shuts the door. And then she goes up and says to people inside, it's Peter. Peter's at the door. You need to come down and see. Well, they don't believe her, do they? Peter has to keep knock, 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 knocking until they come back down and open the door to him and let him in. So it's a silly thing, really. But, you know, they were praying and asking God to do something. 
But when God actually did step in and answer the prayer, they didn't quite believe that it would had actually happened, that God had heard them and done something miraculous. But it is so important, you know, to pray for one another. And that's our scripture memory. Pray for each other, James 5.16. We are to pray for each other, James 5.16, and then wait and see what God's going to do. So we need to pray for one another. But when we pray, we need to realise when God has answered, like Rhoda and the others in that house, when they saw Peter there and couldn't believe it was him. But remember, we have to do our part and pray and do, and God steps in and does his part. But also remember, God is for us. So who then, who, who can be against us? Thanks for watching. 